Hi everybody. Um, some time ago I put up um, on YouTube 330 Blues and since then I've had several people who've, who've wanted to learn how to play this tune and uh, I thought to myself well um, for my next video that I would show you how I approached um, the song of, of Dwayne Eddy's 330 Blues um, and this time, this time, I've used um, the, the backing track that is supplied by um, Got Twang, the Dwayne Eddy backing backing track site, and it's an extremely good video, uh, extremely good backing track, and uh, it's spot on with the with the the record um, that Dwayne plays all those years ago. And the important thing about this about this tune is that on the introduction there's a um a drum a drum pattern that leads you into the tune now the important thing is that you um count to four before you play the first um first chord which is which is the which is the d seventh um sort of one two three four And then you're good to go with the rest of the tune once the backing track starts and you get into it. What I'm, what I'm hoping to do, I've, I've just played it. I've, I've, um, the, next, the next clip you see will be me playing it. What I've done, I've used, um, used the Gretsch, um, but I've used it acoustically. I haven't put any, any amplifier or any tremolo or anything like that on. Didn't want to compli over complicate it. So when you come to play this tune, you know, you can decide your own sound, really. If you want to use the tremolo, use tremolo. Um, however you want to play it. Um, if you don't want to use the backing track, two guitars play it perfectly well. It's in the key of G. And uh, you can get someone to play the chords, just three chords there. And um, G, C and D7. Or... I, I would recommend you use the backing track. You can go to Got Twang's tw uh, website and uh, download the, the backing track. So best of luck with that, and let's press on, and I'll show you, or try and show you, how I approach the tune, and then it's up to you really to, to make it your own. You don't, don't, cop, don't have to copy what I've done. I'll just show you where the positions that I've played it are, and if you decide to use those, fair enough, but if not, come up with some ideas of your own but anyway you'll have fun playing this tune and uh, the best of luck to that and i'll catch up with you later on thanks very much
Now there's a, a lot of timing issues with this tune and there's quite a lot to, throughout the tune so what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and break it down into sequences and the first sequence starts on, you'll be starting on your D7 chord which is there running down to your C7 chord which is there and then there's some notes to it but all this part is the introduction where you don't get any backing track the backing track doesn't start until you've you've got this intro out of the way which you're playing which you're playing on your own um, but what, what I'm doing you count with the with the when you play the backing track you'll hear a drums a drum pattern which would be a series of beats now uh, when it starts you've got to count the first four beats before you play the D seventh chord so it's one two three four Finishing up on that D seventh, which leads, which then sig signals the backing track to start. So there's quite a bit in just in that bit there. Um, the, the 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 notes that I did there um, when I did that sort of is B flat to C, B flat to G. And then it's a uh, uh, well just do it from, just do it from the beginning again it's quite important one two three four see that how, how quite involved that is that rundown so I was running, I'm running down from there. I'll just do it very slowly. So you, you've got your finger on the third bar in the first two strings on the third fret. You're playing the uh, sixth note, which is a B flat. G, F, D. holding on to that um, third string at the third fret and pulling off the C note there So if you can, if you can, if you can't see what I'm doing, perhaps you can hear it, hear what I'm playing there. But I'll do it very slowly again. D7, C7, B, B flat, C, B flat, G, and then bar those, bar that, those uh, the, th the third fret, bar those three three strings. you're pulling off on that C note onto the G note sliding up from the C to the D on the fifth to the F ending up on that G quite a lot involved in that bit and then finishing up on the D seventh and then the backing track will start then we'll go on to that bit next <clears throat> okay we've done the you've done the intro the uh, backing track is about to start and we're starting at the D uh, D note on the uh, second string third fret And that 
that's that bit there see if we can go into that in a bit better detail for you I think the best way to, to, to do this is to just to play through it very slowly and try to watch where my fingers are because it's, so, it's quite a complex piece um, and there's quite a lot of notes and, and double notes that you'll only probably pick up when you start playing it and you'll be hearing it with you, you know, listening and, and uh, hearing what you'll do. If I play it quite slowly, it might help, might help to do it that way. So anyway, we, the, the packing track has started. Bend that C. You learnt that bit already. Almost the same bit again. And then you sort of like a a, a, a G chord and a, and a B flat note. And then you're up on that D seventh. Just worth perhaps doing that again. I'm 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 barring them two notes there, the B and E on the third string, at third fret, and I'm I'm like playing it almost like a double stop. F down to E. Open G, bending that C, pull off onto the G, and then it's And that's that whole section there, second section. So keep playing at that. It might take you a little while to, to, to get that off fluently. But um, just keep p p uh, pegging away at it, plugging away at it. And uh, I'm sure it will come. And once you've got the backing track behind you, you'll probably find that it will carry you along a bit. And you'll know exactly where you, where you are. Anyway, let's go on to the next section. Now, I don't suppose for one minute that Dwayne Eddy still plays this tune exactly um, the way I'm doing it myself here. I expect he varies it quite a bit, and he has over the years. But, um, basically, it's the same tune. It's just different little inflections and different little notes here and there that you can put in yourself. And probably I'm doing the same without realising it. But so anyway, we're on to the next bit, and this is quite a this is quite an involved section too, and there's quite a lot of bends on this one, quite a lot of bend bent notes and uh, going up the fretboard a bit. But anyway, I'll do it as slowly as I can. Now there's quite a lot in that, there's, uh, must be at least nearly probably 30 notes in that bit, but anyway, I'll try and do it um, a bit slower for you if I can, uh, if I can do it any slower, the more difficult to play it slower than to tempo. Um, so you're starting on that D note, D to E back to D, the G on the, on the first string, third fret. And then up to that G on the second fret at the eighth eighth fret at the second string. B 
B-flat, C bend, big C, big bend on that C note at the 8th fret there, 1st string. And then uh, back to the G and you'll play it at least 3 or 4 times in it. Do that again for you. G, G, B flat, C, bent, So that's a, uh, a slide down, you, you, you're playing the uh, third string and second string at the sixth fret and sliding it down to the fifth fret. G note, bending that fifth, uh, fifth, uh, the th bending that third string and second string at the fifth fret. That's a, a B and E, B and an E, B and E string at the third fret. And that's that whole section there. Quite a lot in that one. Quite a lot in that section. Well, that that's the bits that I've shown you up to now. Take you right up to the piano um, when the piano starts on the backing track. Um, you've, you've got all that way through. You've, you've finished up. You've finished up. The, the piano is starting, and what you're going to do now, um, Dwayne doesn't play any solo stuff. But what he does do, he formulates uh, a chord. He does um, the the G chord like that, which is the first finger, third fret on the sixth string, and the third finger on the 5th uh, fret of the 2nd string, like that, which is, a, which is basically a G, just the first two notes of, of the G major chord, but you're playing those two notes there. All the, when the piano starts it goes like this. C D And that's where he that's how he plays over the piano. And obviously you play that a bit quieter to give the piano player um, a bit of a chance. But basically it's the same it's the same fingering. Um, all you're going to do is just move it to different positions. So you're starting on the G, and the first the first instance it goes up to the C up there, which is on the eighth fret. Back to G. And then, um, it, then the next time it goes to C there, which is just moving it across from the sixth string to the fifth string. So you're just moving it across. So we'll just do that we'll again. A bit more accentuation. And then C up there. D there, it's just the same, it's just the same fingering but just moving it up. And then that bit with the B flat. And 
that's that section there. He he, uh, he doesn't actually play that bit at the end there when the piano the piano's playing. I'll just put that in. I'll just put that bit in. So the the piano the piano is finished playing, and we'll go on to the the, the next bit when Dwayne comes in. So this next section, you come out of the piano bit. You you you're going to play this next section, and then you're going to lead on to the sax break, which is a short bit of short bit of guitar work, and then then the sax break. So we start this. This time, when it come when it starts the sax break, you instead of you coming on the G, which you did in the first bit with the piano, you start on the C while the sax is playing, and into the G. D again, down to C. Sax is playing all the time. And then you stop, and then there's a, a little short interval, a bit of timing issue here, but you'll you'll get it as you play it. And you're doing this as quickly as you can. I'll do it slowly first of all. Then the, then the sax again, and you want to see. etc and then that winds right the way down as the sax plays as the sax finishes its its, its end bit ending you're going to do the last bit which will run down to the end of the song I'll, I'll um i'll play that bit through well what i've decided to do now i think what i'll, what I'll um be might be a, a better plan i'll i'll play through part of the piano solo and then go on to the sax solos using the backing track. So um, have a listen to this, and uh, you might be. This might be a bit more um, easy to explain. Here we go. Back to the G. Back to the C. To the D, down to the C, now on to the C for the sax. To the G, D, down to the C, Again. Up to the D. Coming to the ending now. So uh, that seemed to be uh, quite a marathon uh, doing this, doing this short uh, or this, this tutorial for 330 Blues. But we finally got there in the end. 
and as I'll say, it's probably not the same way as, as Dwayne plays it, because he's changed it probably loads of times over the years, lengthened it, shortened it, put different notes in it, played it in different positions. But what I've given you uh, to, in this video certainly will start you on the road if you want to play this tune. Um, and as I say, you've got a really good backing track from Got Twang. Um, and the Dwayne Eddy backing track site there. Um, you, once you get that downloaded, you can play away from play away with that to your heart's content. Right at the very end there, I finished it off with a with an A flat to a G. That's that's how I finished that off there. Um, but do those bits, I mean, you, you, you'll have to do them s the slowly, these bits. Quite difficult to do if you haven't done it before and you, you're, you're new, pretty new to the guitar. Get those bends in as best you can. I'm using quite thick strings on the Gretsch here, so I'm not able to bend it like if you was using a real uh, thin string. But um, I'm getting I'm getting as much as a bend of that as I want. So keep plugging away at that, and I'm sure that um, you know in the end you'll make a decent decent fist of 330 blues. Obviously, your uh, your aim is to play it better than the better than the way I'm playing it. But basically, I'm just showing you from the sequence to sequence and where I'm actually playing it on the fingerboard, which will probably help you if you haven't seen anybody else play it. Um, but uh, you can catch Dwayne Eddy playing it live on YouTube at some point. You can pick him up playing it, and that might give you some more hints as well. But it's a great tune, and it's a, it stood the test of time. And it's one of Dwayne's best, I think. So have fun with that, and uh, we'll catch up. We'll catch up with you at a later date. Bye bye for now.